Hello, everyone, and welcome to this episode of Coffee with Carl. I am your host, as always, Carl Zellner, Managing Attorney with Anderson Business Advisors. And today I want to talk a little bit about uh, what to do if you get a demand letter. So first step when anybody gets a demand letter for our clients, we usually see it first because for most of our clients, we're the registered agent. And if you are the registered agent on your business, that's where demand letters get sent. So first step is always, is it to the appropriate company and do you know who it's from, right? If it's somebody, if it's the wrong company or if you don't know who it's from, there's some additional questions you can ask and potentially you just let the person or the attorney who sent it know, hey, I'm not, unfortunately, I'm not the person you're looking for, or the business you're looking for. I think you got the, you know, somebody in your office looked up the wrong name in the Secretary of State website and you sent it to the wrong address. I've mentioned that because it, it happens a lot more than you think it would. So with us dealing with, I don't know, something like 40 or 50,000 entities at this point for our clients, we get, there are demand letters sent and there's a fair percentage that are in error. So it's sort of a, I guess, a value add that when we look at them, if it's not for our clients, we can say, well, looks like somebody just made an error and sent you the wrong one and they were looking for somebody else. So basically you can walk away. Now, Next thing is, is if it is the right, if it is you, if there is a lawsuit, then where do you go from there? So smart money would say, if there is an actual lawsuit, that's the time to link in a local attorney to respond for you, because ultimately there needs to be a response to a demand letter. Um, otherwise you risk them actually filing a lawsuit. So at the end of the day, if you think it's a shakedown, you may not respond and then if it does result in a lawsuit, then you definitely need a local attorney to represent you because they're going to have to respond to the allegations and you, you know, represent you in the lawsuit. Um, so, yeah. So step one is, is it the right, is it, are they serving or is it the right person? Number two is, is you choose if you're going to respond or not, because ultimately if you think it's a shakedown or uh, there's no basis for the lawsuit, then you know, the, your risk of not responding to a demand letter is that they file a lawsuit. So if you don't respond, they file a lawsuit. That's when you sort of get forced into the corner of, all right, now I need to get a hold of and have a attorney represent me in this matter because now it's a lawsuit. And if you don't, your risk on that side is a default judgment against you for what the other party's asking for. So like I said, it's actually fairly straightforward. It's sort of, I guess, either amusing or scary how many errors there are on actually getting a demand letter to the right person, things like that. There's just places that actually churn them out pretty consistently and quickly. So it's not really all that, I guess, shocking that there's errors on it, but it does happen. So if you get one, number one is make sure they're actually looking for you. <laughs> uh, remember, and then step two is do you respond or don't you respond? Your risk of loss there is if you don't respond, that uh, ultimately they'll, if they have a legitimate case, a lot of times that will result in them filing a lawsuit. And then if you get to that step, then ultimately if there is a resulting lawsuit, you should then reach out to a local attorney to represent you. Um, we can give you, you know, if you're an Anderson Platinum client, we can give you some basic information, but unless we don't go to court for clients, so it's important to use a local attorney for a couple of things. Number one is most attorneys who practice in court know the players, know the judges, know the, uh, you know, stenographers, all those folks there. So it's a sort of a home field advantage. That's why you would use a local attorney. But just remember, that's like, you know, if four or five steps down the track um, from a demand letter. So uh, just wanted to bring it, bring that up and go over it a little bit, because ultimately, like I said, it does come up. People do freak out about demand letters. That's kind of the, the point. In law school, they tell you, be careful what you write in a demand letter because somebody may just send you a check back and then it's done. So if you've got a you know $4 million case and you tell somebody, hey, you know we've got $4,000 into this right now. If you send us a check, we'll walk away. Sometimes you'll get that check and that's why people send demand letters. So especially if you look at it from the other way, if your case isn't quite so strong or quite expensive, you're telling people, you know, you owe us $500 for using our Google image. 
basically, or a copyrighted image, you probably get that check quite a few times because most people just don't want to deal with it. So just be aware. Some of those demand letters are shakedowns out there. Some of them aren't, but that's sort of your, your uh, determining factor is what's your risk there. Res not responding to letter, your risk is they file a lawsuit. So not huge risk there. Uh, once they file a lawsuit, just know that's sort of your triggering moment. You need to get a local attorney to help present you, represent you. Because if the other party is using an attorney and you're not, yes, we've all heard the anecdotal story of how laymen have you know tri triumphed in court, but really you put yourself at a severe disadvantage from a procedural aspect unless you have an attorney representing you if it's a for real lawsuit. So just as a little bit of, uh, I guess, free opinion advice there and stuff that we go through with our clients and just dip the level of analysis we would look at to say, okay, what, where are we at in the process? Where's our decision going to be made here? And then you go on your way. So thanks again for everybody joining us with the, for this episode of Coffee with Carl. As always, please remember to like and subscribe. It lets us know you like and appreciate the material. Tell a friend, all that great stuff you hear when you're you know consuming YouTube content. And keep taking advantage of all of our free content. So for our Platinum clients, we offer uh, different levels of classes for our, you know, people considering being a client, there's free classes you can attend. And, you know, certainly Toby and Clint have a ton of YouTube content as well. I would encourage you to take advantage of that content as well from a bunch, from a couple of very experienced real estate investors who can help you sort of navigate the, the waters at this point. So um, once again, thanks everybody. And we'll catch you on the next episode.